Oh god, these just keep getting more and more obnoxious. Finally, the last of the Herschel Gore Lewis films, at least that I that I own, the Gore Gore Girls from 1972, which was actually Herschel Gore Lewis's final film for 30 years till he came back in 2002 with Blood Feast 2, and then a couple more later on. Uh, so yeah, there are a couple that I don't have, like Taste of Blood, Gruesome Twosome, Blood Feast 2. But for now, this is the last one I have. And I actually don't think I ever got around to watching this. I, I bought all these Herschel Gordon Lewis films probably seven or eight years ago. Probably around seven years ago. I think I saw like the first five or ten minutes. I was probably drinking and I probably changed it. So this was the first time I actually sat down to watch it and holy fuck. This is definitely the sleaziest, goriest, the worst acting out of them all, at least that I've seen. And I've never noticed. I didn't even notice until he came on screen. This movie has Henny Youngman. The legendary king of one-liner comedy, Henny Youngman. Which, and he does deliver a couple jokes. He, he plays the strip club owner. You may recognize him. He played himself in Goodfellas. But pretty much the, the gist of this movie is... There's, uh, I don't even know the name of the, I didn't even catch the name of the, uh, strip club. Anyway. But, <clears throat> these strippers are being murdered. And not just murdered, they are getting mutilated. Fucking gorily mutilated, even by Herschel Gordon Lewis standards. And so this one private investigator, Abraham Gentry, played by Frank Kress, I don't know who he is, and a ditzy reporter, Nancy Weston, played by Amy Farrell. She works for The Globe, and pretty much she offers him money to help solve this case. So that he can solve it and she can get a good story. And basically it's just all these strippers, the top strippers, are all being killed. They come up with a list of suspects. Like At one point they think it's this unstable veteran who used to like to crush skulls that he found. Or crush heads that he found in Vietnam with his bare hands. So all he does... All this character does, he sits at, like, the bar, and he has, like, melons and tomatoes and whatever. He draws faces on them, and he just smiles and crushes them with his hands. No one finds it weird. And then there's this, like, uh, women's rights activist group who are always protesting at the club. I saw one side that said quit with tit. So he thinks maybe they have something involved with it. And that's the movie. You have speculation, murder, then mutilation, speculation. It just keeps going until there was one reviewer that even said it repeats itself until it seems an ending is appropriate. The death scenes, though, holy fuck. Okay. The first girl, they all pretty much get murdered with... They, they get their throat slit, and then they just get fucked up. The killer has, like, a black leather jacket and black, black gloves. After the first girl gets her throat slit, she gets, like, turned over, and, like, a meat cleaver just hacks the fuck out of the back of their head, or her head. It's just a gory mess. I'll say the effects look great. And also the killer has a thing with like taking the eyes out and like squishing them and popping them and busting them up and stuffing them back in. 
the, the this other girl gets killed. She gets her throat slit. Then she's draped over a table. Her underwear pulled down. And with a wooden meat tenderizer, gets just her ass beaten with it. But of course, you know, since it's Herschel Gordon Lewis, it looks like she's getting beaten like... But of course, blood appears. And then by the end of it, you know, it looks like tenderized meat, like all chewed up and then salt and pepper gets poured on it and then there's this scene where it's like two back to back there's like this house full of women and the first girl gets her throat slit and like this scene isn't even in uh, the Wikipedia but throat slit and then like uh a shirt on like a hot iron on her face and I mean fucks her face all up takes the eyeballs out like really long scenes of like squishing them and squishing them and popping them and then I didn't see this coming this was actually really humorous and gross pair of scissors and just cuts the tips of her nipples off and literally sprays milk like a fountain into like a martini glass does it to the other one, and it's like this dark, pink, bloody kind of milk that tings the glass together. Then this girl comes down the stairs, enters the kitchen, and the first girl was cooking, was you know, f cooking fries in hot oil, but in like a glass bowl. I didn't know you could do that. She doesn't get her throat slit, but she gets her head dunked into the hot grease. I used to work in fast food. Fucking ow. And. Uh, and then you get some of the worst acting I've ever seen. Again. Even by Herschel Gordon Lewis standards. This third woman comes down the stairs. And just what you think is just going to be mayhem after mayhem. She walks in. She sees what it is. And she just starts screaming. Hands on her head, but it's just like little, like, bad acting screams, like, ah, ah, ah. This other woman comes down, tries, doesn't even look in the kitchen, tries to get her to stop, and she's literally screaming with no emotion in her face. So, she, the woman's like shaking her and telling her to stop, and she's just going like, ah, 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 ah. Because then a third woman comes down, tries to get her to stop, and she's l literally, it, it goes on for like a minute and a half, two minutes, so just, ah, 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 friggin' ridiculous, I, I can't believe, I know these movies are tongue-in-cheek, and this is considered like a comedy, but I can't believe they left that in. Oh, and a piece of evidence that's left at the scene is, like, a pin of, like, the women's rights. And it ends with the investigator talking to Henny Youngman, saying, Hey, why don't we set up a strip contest? We'll offer a $1,000 prize. Killer's probably going to go after the winner. We'll fix it so that, you know, this the woman I'm with, who's incredibly stupid, the... Uh, the reporter. The reporter keeps falling in love with the <laughs> investigator. And this is really the only funny part or funny parts of the movie is like she keeps trying to like come up to kiss him and he just like pushes her away or he like turns and she'll like fall. He has no interest whatsoever. So they have the strip contest and I'll say there's I mean, play on go-go girls and strippers, tons of nudity, really long scenes of just naked strippers. I actually ended up just fast-forwarding through all of it because I just wanted to get through this fucking movie. And of course, you know, they give her the prize. It's a trap for the killer. The killer is this waitress that was, you know, this obnoxious waitress that was introduced at the beginning of the film. 
And the reason she's doing it is because... Which, actually, it's really funny. Because the killer... She was gonna dump acid on the reporter who's, like, drunk and passed out. But then the guy, like, makes himself know. So she, like, goes to throw the acid at him. But he catches the jar... And then she just grabs the knife to stab him, and he's like, ah, 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 there's no cheese and crackers. You don't need that knife. So she just puts it down. <clears throat> okay. And he... He takes off her wig and starts taking off her jacket to show she has burn marks all over her. So uh, obscuring, you know, her chest and her head. She's jealous and hateful of their beauty. That's why she does this. That's why she mutilates the hell out of him. She jumps out of a window and... I wasn't even sure what happened. But jumps out of a window and then this thing rolls into the road. Gets run over by a car. And it's all gory. I guess it's her head. How her head fell off or just her head landed in the road. I don't know. They solve the case. Then they make out... And you get the cheesiest ending. She points at the screen. The guy's like, uh, uh, you've seen enough. And he like pulls down the black credits and says, with pride, we announce the film is over. Uh, again, it sounds like I'm ranting, but I really didn't expect much. Just His movies are just so... Like, such prime examples of exploitation that I can't get mad. I, I can't really rant on him. He never sought out to get good actors or make a good plot. At least with these films, he just wanted to make gory splatter films. And I gotta say, this was a gross out. I, I wasn't expecting it to be this gory. Yeah, I mean, for the time, 1972, this is gory as fuck. Even the first kill when the woman's just getting her head hacked up with the cleaver, and, like, killer's running the fingers through it, and, like, squishing the eyeballs. And then with the milk coming out after he cut the nipple off, that, that was unexpected. So this is definitely the goriest. Definitely not my favorite. You know, I, I would say the most entertaining or the best would probably still be like Color Me Blood Red or even The Wizard of Gore. If I was to rant on any of them, it probably would have been this one, but I, I, don't, I don't see a point in ranting on Hersh Herschel Gore and Lewis films. But anyway, this finally concludes the Herschel Gore and Lewis marathon so far. At some point in the future, I will get a taste of blood, gruesome to some, you know, other ones I'm missing. He does have like a game show splatter movie called um, The Uh-Oh Show. I'll check that out. But for now, that's it. Gore Gore Girls, thank you for watching. <laughs> Jesus.